What's up? Welcome back to the vlog. Thanks for being here. Doing something really exciting. Like extremely exciting today. Ugh. I actually had this idea last year, but just couldn't get it done until now. First I got up, there's a magazine and they're doing an article about YouTube. Steve, how long have you been in the photography game? Since 1970. <laughs> Dude. In 1969, one of my first photo projects right out of high school, I photographed a concert of Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> wow, I still man. have the photos. They've yeah. never been published, they've never been shown. Right. I'm doing a YouTube video of my, with my Jimi Hendrix photos. Yeah, yeah. I've gotten permission from the Hendrix Foundation to use his music with the video. No way, man. So, oh, that is awesome. It could go viral. Yeah, do a good job on that one, for sure. Boom. Location number two, Steve. Front of the Capitol. Can you imagine when someone asks you how long have you been in photography and you're like, 50 years? Like you should stick in the game just for the stories, man. Jimmy Hendrix. Stay in the game. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think we planned that, we didn't plan that, that was rad. Think we got some good stuff? You know I never brag until I see them <laughs> later. Yeah. Thanks so much for the photo shoot, man. Thank you, Dakota. Really appreciate it. I'm excited to see you. Okay. All right. It. Thanks for coming up. See you on the movie. See you around. Foggy. Got pretty foggy. <laughs> Can I have a hammerhead, please, to go? All right, my first camera. I don't think I've ever officially told you the story of what I did to get this camera. So now is that time. In case you're wondering what a hammerhead is, it's a red eye, but uh, at Little Amps. They have their own name for it. The story starts, as many do, with being a broke college kid and learning about a way to make easy money. So my roommate, Phil, and I found out that you could just call Penn State Hershey Medical and be like, I'm interested in doing studies and that they would put you on this list and then they'd contact you whenever there was one and they'd pay you for them. So I did a couple that had to do with like nerves, but then I got contacted about a sleep study. 13 nights, we went in, we did the test. Phil did not qualify. Like he goes into REM sleep right away. So he wasn't allowed to do it, but I was like a normal sleeper with normal sleep cycles they're like Cody you're in if you want it so I said yes <laughs> I need to go to Baltimore to buy my old camera back so I'm gonna be doing that while I'm telling you this story <laughs> this study thank goodness was not a sleep deprivation study because 13 nights of not sleeping would have been crazy this was a sleep restriction study so what they did was they hooked me up to all of these crazy electrodes all over my head every single night, this crazy glue. I looked very weird. I had to only sleep six hours a day and no naps for like, I think 10 days in a row. I do remember being extremely tired at work. I was working for a cold calling company at the time. And I remember being very sleepy, but being like, I can't sleep, I can't take a nap. Like, this is science. So the first couple nights were fine, but by like the seventh and eighth and ninth night, I remember telling Amber, I will never do this again. Like, it just became one of the hardest things I'd ever done. The lack of sleep, the constant needing to get the stuff in and out of my hair, like all of the stuff, it just, it got so old so quick. Speaking of things that got old very quickly, there was a thermometer that I needed to have in me while I slept. It was, it was a rectal thermometer. <laughs> They had to like hook me up to IVs and stuff throughout the whole experience. The one time, like I'm normally really good at, you know, someone finding a vein, but I think there was a nurse that was like a little bit less experienced and she tried like three times in the same spot on one of my arms. I had actually said like the third time, she's like, all right, I'm gonna try one more time. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pass out in 10 seconds. And then I did and then it was awesome. I love that I called it like that. Anyway. I made it. I made it through the 13 nights. They gave me $900. I bought my first DSLR, um, and like that changed the game. That changed the game, and that is the camera that I'm going down to Baltimore to buy right now. Forgot I needed money. Stopped at the bank. Hey, how's it going? Good. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, sure. 
Here it is. Mind if I open it up? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for keeping it safe for me all these years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Old Faithful. Old Faithful. Look at the back. Wow, look at that LCD screen. I know, I know. <laughs> Allie, thank you so much. Later, thank <laughs> See you. Ya. I'm going down to Inner Harbor. Let's take some photos. You're asking yourself, how did he get those shots? <laughs> this guy. What's up, guys? <laughs> I've been watching Jay, I don't know for how long, like months. Wanted to ask you about one of the things that you worked hardest for in your life. What was it? Uh, sobriety. 100% sobriety. Uh, I've been sober for nine and a half years now. The hard work does make it amazing. It, it's it's a lot of work. It's still a lot of work. Like that's a never ending thing, you know? Um, and I think that's why I value it more. I still to this day call myself an addict and an alcoholic in the present tense to remind myself that like one, the fact that I'm sober is absurd and statistically an anomaly and that I have to continue to work to do it. So my whole deal is to help people live their best lives, no matter what that means to them. If you got a vision for your life that you're trying to work towards, I wanna help you work towards it. And so I do that, and on the side I make a lot of videos. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming down, and uh, yeah, let this be the start. This is the start. All right, All right. see you, dude. See you, man. So this camera, ah, it is crazy, like how nostalgic this thing makes me feel. And I can't, but like, look how small the LCD screen is. It doesn't shoot video. It does, it, should, it legit just shoots photos. I got it because I wanted the look. Like I really wanted that shallow depth of field look and I didn't know how to achieve it because I was using like handy cams and like, um, what was it? Like the Canon XL1 or something like that before. And I could never get shallow depth of field. And then I saw someone take a photo on a DSLR and I was like, yeah, I want that. Like, I just want to make stuff that looks like that. And so I didn't even care that it wasn't video. I just wanted to make photos like that. And then I realized that I don't, I hardly even want to do it because I'm sure the, I'm sure the shutter life on this is like coming to an end. Then I found out when you hold this button down, you can kind of make a two frame per second video. So I did actually make one of those in Philadelphia my last year of film school, which I'm really, I really, I wonder if I can find that. I shot weddings on this thing. I uh, shot a bunch of photos in college with it. But seeing this has made me want to go see if I can find the camera that I learned photography on. Jay, massive thanks, man. That sort of perspective, just thank you, man. Go check out Jay. Also, check out Steve Miller from earlier. They'll both be linked down there. Bump. That's the one that taught me photography. The first one, yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Canon AG one. I, uh -huh. couldn't I couldn't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Canon AE1. So this is the camera that I learned about aperture, yeah. ISO. The high school. Yeah. yeah, dark room, all the different stuff. <laughs> all the different things. Yeah. I didn't realize it was a Canon. Yeah. For some reason I thought it was like a Pentax or... Oh. No, but that makes so much sense. Got chicken, organic chicken breasts with a nice uh, pepper, garlic, 
uh, blackened uh, butter olive oil uh, seared hard and then slow cooked. Then we got Brussels. Oh yeah, remember our Brussels? <laughs> you did that, you did that without laughing. You Childhood bedroom for the win. I love this camera so much more because of how much I had to go through in order to get it. When you have to put in work for something, it makes it, like we all appreciate the things we've had to work for way more than the things that were just, that just fell into our laps. And so don't wish away all of that sort of hard work, all of that grind, all of that hustle, like that's, that's the good stuff. The grind and the hustle is the good stuff. Thanks for being here. I'm Cody Warner. I make videos on YouTube and then try to do other awesome stuff too. It's just a journey, like I'm on a journey and I have some big ideas. Would love it if you subscribe. My whole jam is to encourage you to do something. If you wanna get something done, I wanna encourage you to do it. Also, maybe don't sell your first camera, all right? Then you won't have to buy it back in a couple years when, uh, when you're just feeling nostalgic about it. <laughs> have a great one. I'll see you tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. See you next week. Did I tell you this was my bedroom? This was my bedroom when I was a when I was a kid. But now it's my dad's painting studio. What do you think about the fact that as I grew up, we turned more into best friends than uh, like father son? Yeah, I've thought about that, and like everyone says, that's not you're not supposed to let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, but it, I mean, it's it's it is what it is. We yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure it has a lot to do with the fact that you lived with me from the time you were in fifth grade until you... Third grade. Third grade, wow. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we were more like two, well, we were two guys, two brothers, father, right. father and son. Um, yeah, I think that that's what's weird about it, is like for me and you we just only know what we had as a father-son relationship. Yeah. So like when people say, don't become best friends with your son or don't become best friends with your, I mean, no one says don't become best friends with your dad. Mm -hmm. But people say to dads, don't become best friends with your son. We just don't really know like yeah. any other way to do it other than that. So right. that's mm -hmm. like a weird, you know. Yeah, yeah. Can't really relate to, yeah, exactly. It's a different, it's a different, it's a different situation with us. Yeah. It just is.